Hey guys, in this video I'm going to help you navigate the podcast and the YouTube network companies. So if you are a podcaster or a YouTuber and you got a bit of an audience or a big audience, you will probably be approached by companies who will want to represent you and offer to uh, monetize your stream of traffic. So in this video I'm going to give you a couple quick tips on this because uh, people get scammed on this. This is nothing new. We've seen several scammer networks, whether it be in the podcast space or the YouTube space, and I'm sure others. So I'm going to give you a couple of um, principles to work off of so you can navigate this whole uh, area intelligently so you don't get burnt. So I am not a huge podcaster. Actually, I don't do podcasts, but I do YouTube as a hobby. But I got about a quarter million people uh, who follow who have, who have followed me on YouTube and I've done maybe in the last three four years maybe 50 60 I don't know, 70 brand deals whether it was directly with the brand in question or through a middle person middleman who was brokering the deal so I'm going to give you some tips here based on that experience and most importantly based on the fact I've been in business uh, since I've been 18 years old so that's like 800 years now so You'll learn something. So the first rule when you start building up a significant audience, podcast or YouTube or whatnot, first rule is that don't make brand deals, don't make 360 deals as they talk about in the music industry. Don't make deals with these networks unless you really, really have to. And I would, so that's the first thing. You wanna be very wary of any of these type of deals, why? Because if you got a significant audience, the brands will come to you. If they're not coming to you, it's probably because A, you're not making your uh, contact information easily accessible. Uh, you're not giving them, them a way to easily contact you. And you got to start promoting yourself in that regard as well. When should you start promoting yourself as a, uh, as a, as a podcaster or YouTuber? I would say when you have at least 100 to a quarter million views a month or views uh, or, or downloads a month at least that much depends on your niche you know if you're in a highly specialized niche that's valuable you may have a lot less downloads but um, you'll still be able to get some good brand deals I'm kind of in between because I do technology so I don't have to do huge audience to get people throwing money at me if I was doing I don't know videos comedy videos or me pushing cats into water or something like that, yeah, or dancing videos, the number's gonna have to be much higher than, you know, half a million views a month, much higher than that to, to be able to get some any decent brand deals. But anyway, first step is you gotta build an audience. So if you're watching this, you're a total beginner, don't worry about this until you build an audience, because once you build an audience, the uh, advertisers come to you, especially if the content that you produce is not controversial, uh, it's well presented, it looks professional, you conduct yourself well. Brands want to associate with creators, whether it be podcasts, YouTube, etc. They want to be associated with creators that will make them look good. You don't want to associate with some negative, unprofessional uh, creator, right? Now, take the politics aside, that's just a reality situation. Businesses don't want to risk uh, their reputations unless, you know, so keep that in mind. So let's say you do have a podcast or a YouTube channel and you're getting a decent number of views as we just discussed and you get approached by a uh, podcast network or some sort of uh, YouTube uh, aggregator or network. Here are some basic principles about negotiation and contracts you should that apply to everything, not just this. Number one, I learned this decades ago, contracts should be super, super simple. The more complex the contract, the more you should be wary about that contract, right? In contract complexity, you can find the uh, turds, you can find the bombs, you can find the things that they don't want you to see. And in fact, we've seen famous cases in the past, I believe with credit card companies, they would make their contracts super complex to hide the nefarious, the nefarious details that they did not want you to see. So it's a general rule, contracts should be simple, Number two, uh, the contract's complexity should reflect the deal. So a podcast deal where they represent you for X period of time 
or X number of deals should be really, really simple. Number two, the contract should have an easy escape clause for you and them, of course. That means that for no reason, you don't have to give a reason. You could be, you just stubbed your toe, you woke up this morning, you decide to eat Cheerios instead of eggs and be, whatever reason, you can just say, I want out of this deal. This is done, no, repercu no repercussions. Reasonable, you do this, you know, 30 days. Let's say you had, you, you made a mistake of signing a one-year deal or a six-month deal. You should be able to renege, you should be able to get out of that deal with 30 days notice and you're out and there's no repercussions. That should be first and foremost in the contract. They're not willing to agree to that, get out. Don't even go near them. You should be able to back out without any, you don't have to give a reason. You shouldn't have to give a reason. It's your content, it's your life. You don't have to give a reason. You want out, you want out. How about payment terms? So let's say you're dealing with a company and you signed a deal where they're gonna represent you and they're supposed to pay you every 30 days or every 45 days. If they don't issue that payment on time, within a few days, so it's 30 days, and by 33 days, you don't have your money, you call them up, hey, where's my money? Blah, 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 okay, the deal is done until I get paid in full, boom, that's it, you're out. That should be in the contract as well. If they don't pay within X number of days negotiated, it should be like a few days in which they're supposed to pay, everything is, you're, you're clear of the deal, you're, you have automatic eject, you're totally independent of them, with no obligation, and they have to still pay you. So this way, you don't get caught up. I've seen in these recent stories where these people get, you know, they get hosed for hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. So you don't, you wanna make sure when you negotiate, if you decide to negotiate one of these deals, you wanna be sure that it's stipulated quite clearly in the contract that uh, if they don't pay on time, you're, it's automatically, you're out with no, and you have no obligation to them, right? So that leads me to the next point, if they're not paying you on time, I don't care what the excuse is. That's not, that's not your problem, it's their problem. They gotta pay you on time. If they don't, forget it. You're out and uh, with no repercussions. So for example, I have a mentoring program. I'm not trying to promote it, but I do have a mentoring program. I teach people coding, business, freelance, entrepreneurship, and a whole bunch more. And I'm older than a lot of these people out there, so I'm just sharing my experience. In my mentoring program, I have a 12 payment uh, option. And guess what I do? Unlike all my competitor boot camps, you're not obligated. If after three months you need to pause payments, no problem. If you have to cancel because your hardships happen or whatever happens, I don't hold people to account. Why? Because I'm confident in my product. I don't need to lock people in because I don't want to do it. I think it's immoral. And number two, um, I'm confident in what I offer, so I don't mind giving them a way out. I make it easy for people. So when you're dealing with people, uh, a podcast network or a YouTube network or whatever, they should make it transparent and easy and simple for you to leave because if they're confident in the service that they provide, they should uh, be confident enough to be able to provide that out for you. So in my experience with the brand deals, I. The best thing to do is to work directly with the brand in question. So if you're doing an ad for a company, instead of using an interme intermediary, sometimes you have to use them, but instead of using an intermediary, it's better to deal directly with the brand. Much better situation, because you don't got this middleman uh, skimming off of you, first of all. And it's just an extra level of complexity. Simplicity is the key of all things, including business deals. So yeah. Uh, the rule here, deal directly with the brands if you can, as opposed to a middleman. Okay, if you have to deal with a middleman, a, a, an ad network, a podcast network, YouTube network, okay, but don't do long, long deals, especially if you don't know who they are. First, first thing, you know, you want to vet them. If you have a deal that's more than just a one uh, video deal or a one podcast deal, vet these networks very, 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 very carefully. Let me emphasize that. If you are doing a deal with a company, especially the first time, vet them, research them. Don't just talk to one person, do some reading, do some research, check out their site, check out Google, see if people are talking about them. Be very, very careful who you do business with. So let's say you've checked them out, 
you've checked out who they are, they seem pretty clean, and it's the first time you're still dealing with them, do one very simple deal. See how they work. Do one deal only. Don't sign a multi-deal with them if you've never worked with them before. Do one simple one and make sure it's clear in the contract which is a one-off deal. I'm doing one ad spot with you. See how they operate. See if they, they communicate well. See if they facilitate the interaction between you and the end purchaser of the ad spot on your uh, podcast or on your YouTube. Make sure, you, you, you know, make sure they're good to deal with and in the end, make sure you get paid. After you get paid, after you've done the deal, if it looks good, then maybe, maybe consider a multi-brand deal. But, uh, but proceed with extreme, extreme caution. So what you ought to be doing overall is you ought to be promoting your podcast in terms of advertisers. Again, once it gets a certain level of uh, viewership, you know, if you only get like 10 viewers, don't even waste your time. You want to get the good numbers as I spoke about earlier in this video. So don't waste your time on, on trying to get uh, advertisers if you don't have a, an audience. Let the audience come first. And then when you do, you can start plugging, you know, at the beginning or at the top or at the beginning of the podcast or at the bottom of the podcast. Uh, you can pump, you know, if you want to contact me for business purposes and marketing, check out you know, contact me at this number below or this address below. Probably don't want to give out your phone number. Uh, maybe have a website. If you start becoming uh, pretty prominent out there, I would have a website, your own website, your own URL, easy to do. You can use a builder if you want to, so that there's a place where people can contact you and you can start uh, doing brand deals. I would say 90% of the deals I've done were directly with the uh, company in question. They reached out to me. They find me, they reached out to me. I've done a lot of deals though with um, uh, middlemen, but I've never signed multi-video deals with anybody. Uh, and, well, in terms of a, uh, a podcast network or a YouTube uh, network, if you will, uh, I've just signed, I've done, I've signed a few deals with the end advertiser where I've done like three deal, three video deals and so on, but always direct. So to summarize, contracts are always something you should enter into with extreme, 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 con, uh, extreme, extreme caution. Be sure that the contracts are very simple. Uh, be sure that the contracts allow for an easy exit with no penalties for you, without any excuses, without that needing any excuses. It should be, I want out, because it's because it's Monday and you should be able to get out. So this has to be stipulated very clearly that that is the uh, foundational principle of the of the uh, contract of the relationship between you and the third party. Uh, so this way you have an out. If you find the uh, company in question is adding complexity unnecessarily or adding complexity, they don't want to give you an easy out, then that would be, uh, to me, big red flags, and you just don't want to deal with them, generally speaking. At the end of the day, if your podcast is popular, if your YouTube uh, channel is popular, and you've got a big audience, the deals will come to you pretty easily. That's my experience, and I have just a small YouTube channel of a quarter million subs. All right, I hope you found this useful. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I teach people in the ways of code, freelance, business. I'm sharing my decades of experience with you guys so you can avoid the mistakes I made. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.